Hi everyone, Karen Roby here for Tech Republic. Uh, we're talking about the AI skills gap today here uh, with Carlos Contreras. Carlos, thanks for being with me. Thank you, Karen, for having me. Certainly, uh, you of course are the, the AI and Digital Readiness Director uh, with Intel, and this is something you know the skills gap. We've been talking about this on so many fronts, of course, when it comes to tech, so many positions we need to fill. We just don't have enough people uh, skilled and ready to fill those. And it seems like AI, cybersecurity, those are the two we tend to talk about uh, a lot, you know, that we need more people ready to fill those roles. Um, but Intel, uh, as you know, you guys are building on a program uh, to help change this and bridge the gap here. Just give us a little bit of a, an overview of, of how the program started. Yes, Karen, we're very proud of, of this program. Uh, we had this big announcement last week with 18 community colleges in 11 states. Uh, I, I can tell you we've got a bunch of Intel people super excited about it, a bunch of other community colleges around the country super excited about it. It started with the premise and that you talked about in terms of uh, workforce skills, AI workforce skills, and how do we develop those. And for us, we have a focus not only on the skills, but also on equity and access. So how do we provide access to these technology skills that are gonna become so important for our economy? And where are the places where people can get this access? And community colleges are a very democratic, very open uh, education system that we have in this country that gives uh, opportunities for underserved communities, for uh, people that wanna go back to school and rescale. And we thought they would be the, you know, terrific partners for us to start this program in the U.S. And just to give us an idea, uh, and, and you, you touched on this briefly, uh, Carlos, of the, the the type of student you guys are seeing enroll. Is it, you know, those coming straight from high school and they're going to community college? Is it people that have been in the workforce for 30 years and they're saying, hey, I need something new? Who's Who do you see really, you know, moving in this direction? Yeah, we're seeing a, a combination of both. So we're seeing uh, uh, kids out of high school, uh, students out of high school that are that are moving on to a you know four year degree, uh, those that want to get a two year associate's degree, but we're also seeing professionals. So we're seeing uh, engineers, people with technical skills already that want to go back and refresh, like they hear about AI, what's this AI, and so it's getting them that access to this information to this technology, and so it's it's a bit of a mix. And when we talk about AI, uh, Carlos, I mean, it's something, you know, as a tech journalist, I'm talking about just about every day because AI touches our lives in so many ways. And I think ways people have no idea, you know, that it's yeah. kind of behind the scenes. So talk a little bit about the need. I mean, AI is only growing, right? So this is this has got to be coming at a really good time. That's right. Uh, we did a, actually with, with Dell, we did a, a survey of community colleges and four-year institutions, uh, the faculty, the deans, and we found that 50% of, of the respondents said, yeah, this is a growing field, right? 70% like anticipate demand from employers. So there is this, this sense in the educational institutions that they need to set up these programs. Uh, and then on the customer side, right, because we have many customers uh, that we work with, they also tell us this, right? They also tell us one of the things that they, that one of the barriers is I don't have enough workers, so I don't have the right skills with my workforce. So we're seeing it kind of on, bo on both sides, Intel as a supplier to some of our customers, but also these uh, educational institutions that are anticipating the tsunami that's coming for these jobs and the need for them to kind of ramp up that capability in their colleges to offer these types of programs. And one of the things, Carlos, I had a, a very long interview yesterday about this um, that, you know, many people in the tech world are saying, okay, the, the, the current education system, the way this works isn't working anymore for what our needs are. Uh, yeah. And we, we can't just say, oh, a four-year degree, and then you go from there. That's the way to do it. Yeah. No, not really. Not not with what we need to fill with tech. So how how do you see the educational system in general changing? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think the, I think the one thing that you're that those these folks have talked about because I've heard the same thing too is just the speed of the technology and how quickly it's moving and how good the tools are getting. And we have that speed of the of AI technology moving really fast. And then we have educational systems that are more, you know, they're slower, right? They're meant to be bureaucratic and slow uh, and, and control kind of like what's being taught to students. Uh, so we kind of need to break that uh, in private public partnerships like this one 
it are a good way where we have direct communication with chancellors, with deans, with college professors, and we try to speed up that process. Uh, that's also part of our program. It's not only the professional development with these institutions, but it's also like, hey, what's your plan if you're a chancellor of this organ of this large organization? How are you incorporating AI into your educational uh, institution? And as you know, right, this technology is getting into healthcare, automotive. Uh, uh, manufacturing, right, you name it, right, and community colleges just happen to train also, right, nurse technicians, manufacturing technicians, automotive technicians, so it's a really good place uh, for us to go with this, these types of programs, because that's kind of where people are going to go, and, and they're going to go into these different uh, industry segments. Yeah, and it really does uh, touch every industry, Carlos. Uh, before I let you go here, where do you see, and as you mentioned, tech moves fast. I mean, right. you know, it's like a month later, you feel like you, you've you missed stuff if you weren't paying attention the way things change. So uh, this is rapidly changing. Um, where do you see, say, 18 months to two years from now, where do you hope that this program is, um, you know, your success rate, things like that? Yeah, I mean, our, our goal, uh, we'd like to have... Uh, at least 50 of these uh, schools with this program, which uh, in, in our back of, my, back of my mind, I would like to have it in every single state. So how do we get there so that we have capability, this type of capability that's offered to every single state and have students and professionals go to a place to, to go and, and get these skills? Yeah, most definitely. And as you mentioned earlier, there is a gap there with access. You know, not everyone has that. So to see it growing and be, as you mentioned, in every state, I mean, that would be a, a great goal to reach, certainly. Yeah. And, and one thing, the one trend that we are seeing is uh, at, at the federal level, we are seeing this recognition of investing in AI in terms of uh, uh, research, but also education. So I think that's, that's really good uh, uh, type of momentum that's building up for these types of programs. So that these institutions also have, you know, that type of funding available for them to go be able to scale these types of programs. Fantastic. All right. That's a great place to end there, Carlos. I certainly appreciate you being with me here uh, today. And, and truly, I, I think the program sounds uh, fantastic, really. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thanks for Thanks being for with me. me. Absolutely. We appreciate all of you being with us here uh, today as well. For much more, make sure you check out Tech Republic. Mm -hmm.